Hallelujah. Happy, glorious, happy day to you. It's another glorious day. Another joyful day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. I am here again to encourage us on the topic which I started last week. Uh, no limitation in the possibilities of God. Uh, there is no limitation in God. Uh, there is nothing that thing does not exist that God cannot do. Then if we know that there is no limitation in God, why should we seek from help where there is no help? And we use the name of God to cover up. If we know that there is no limitation in God, why should we look for help to do the things of God? If we know that he is the all-knowing God uh, that makes things happen uh, when he wants. Uh, then if we know all this because those things uh, are written in his word, uh, then why should we help God uh, to do his work uh, by seeking help, uh, by doing things that we ought not to do uh, when we know that there is no limitation in God. Uh, hallelujah. And this is the second part. Uh, with God, there is no limitation. Uh, there is nothing God cannot do. All you need to do now, uh, when you know this, uh, is all you need to do is just to come to Him uh, the way you are. Trust in God, uh, believe in Him, uh, and having faith in God, uh, total faith in God. Uh, that is the only all, all, the only thing you ought to do now. Not to go and do things like people will say, we have to do things for God. Uh, did God send you to do things for him? When he is the one that there is no limitation, uh, do you think uh, that what you can do now, uh, yeah, because you, you think you can do it because God cannot do it? That is what you're just doing uh, because when you think uh, you can do things for God, uh, you can help God to do what he ought to do. And you're just saying that God cannot do it. Uh, so therefore, let me do it for God. How oh, how we limit this God in our life? Uh, and because we limit God, uh, and that is what makes people to fall in the places uh, they ought not to fall. Hallelujah. And let's pray as we continue. Father in heaven, I worship you, God, and adore you. I thank you for another moment again like this, oh God. Uh, I bless your name because you're the God, oh God, uh, the God that there is no limitation in. Uh, Father, and I thank you for the word that comes forth again, oh God, and I pray to you over this that everyone that listen to the sound of my voice, Father, I ask that you give them the revelation of this word, oh God, uh, that they will be able to be they will, start, they will be able to come out from that cage, the place yourself, uh, by thinking, oh God, that they can work for you. Thank you, Father, in heaven. Be that exalted, be that magnified. Uh, in Jesus' glorious name, I have prayed. Uh, amen and amen. Uh, hallelujah. Like I said. Uh, no limitation to the possibilities of God. Uh, there is nothing that God cannot do. You know, an uh, example of those people that limit God, uh, example of it, uh, we have found uh, in the, the, the people of Israel, they were the example of those who limit God. Uh, and we're going to get there. But before then, let me start by reading Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Uh, let's start from reading that, please. Uh, and we go to those... Uh, how can man, how can men limit God? Uh, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5, I'll read verse, seven, uh, verse 17, sorry. Ephesians chapter 5, 17 said, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Uh, don't be foolish. Uh, understand the will of God. Uh, how can you understand the will of God uh, when you don't know this God? Uh, how can you understand the will of God uh, when your trust is not in God? Uh, how can you understand this will uh, when you don't have faith in God? Uh, you understand the will of God uh, and you walk accordingly to his will uh, and you allow his will to be done. Uh, by the time we live according to the will of God, uh, you begin to see experience uh, the, that there is no limitation in this God uh, because it's what and yes and amen. By the time you know what his will is all about, uh, it will be difficult for you to make mistakes uh, because all you live for that. Uh, all you're interested in uh, is the will of God be done. What is the will of God in your life? 
you that call yourself a Christian, uh, what if one we ask you, what is the will of God uh, concerning the way you're living, concerning your life? Uh, what will you say? Uh, because most people that limit God, uh, they don't know what the will of God uh, is all about. And those are the ones that just come, they just fall into it uh, because others are falling into it, because others are doing it. Uh, let me just fall into it and fall out. Uh, that is not how it goes about and that is why we see people today many now see the wrong you know there's a saying that say when you reach the, the, the place the first people you see they are the the negative one uh, that will make you believe that everybody is like that and the people we are seeing today that we are hearing today they are the people that call themselves the so-called because christian is one uh, the, the real born again Christian is the one, the, it's just one that is the Christ like. And any other thing uh, aside Christ like, they are not Christian, uh, they forge the name. Uh, and those are the ones that they stain it yourself outside and they use it to classify everybody. There is one Christian, the only one Christian that is recognized. Uh, the Bible told us where they felt called the believers Christian. Uh, why, what made they call their Christian? Because they were Christ like. Uh, and anything outside Christ like uh, I give a message the other day and I said that uh, Jesus is still our role model. Uh, a role model uh, irrespective of the generation we have today, irrespective of the lifestyle we are living, Jesus has never changed. Uh, he remained the role model. Anything outside that uh, is not a Christian. So now we not, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Uh, Lord, let me read Psalm, Psalm 78. Psalm 78 verse 25. Uh, how that how people are limiting god uh, the people of israel they did it years ago and today keep people continue to limit god uh, let i will read because of time i'm going to rush this verse uh, i'm going to read psalm 78 25 to 41 if time will permit me and hallelujah psalm 78 uh, how the people of israel were limiting god hallelujah psalm let me read from 24. Psalm 78 from verse 24. He raised that manna for the people to eat. He gave them the gain of heaven. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He saved them all the food they could eat. He let loose the east wind from the heaven. And by his power made the south wind blow. He rained meat down on them like dust. Best like sand on the sea shore. He made them come down inside their camp. All around of their tents, they ate till they were grudge. He had given them what they craved, but before they turned from what they craved, even while the food was still in their mouth, God's anger rose against them. He put to death the, the studies among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. In spite of all this, uh, they keep on sinning. In spite of the wonders, they did not believe. Uh, so he ended their days in futility and their years in terror. Whenever God showed them, they could seek him. Whenever God showed, slowed them, slid them, they could seek him. Uh, they eagerly turned him, turn to him again. They remember that God was their rock that God most I was their redeemer, but then they could flitter in with their mouths, uh, lying to him with their tongues. Uh, their hearts were not loyal to him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Yet he was mindful. Uh, he forgave their iniquities uh, and did not destroy them. Time after time, he retained his anger and did not stay up his full water. He remembered that they were but flesh, uh, a passing breeze that does not that does not return. How often they rebel against him uh, in the wilderness uh, and grieve him in the wasteland again and again. Uh, they put God to the test uh, and they they verse the only one of Israel uh, and so on and so forth. We've just read the book of Psalm seventy eight. Uh, we see here these are the people that God has shown His wonders to now. Uh, Time without time, he said, even when they were seeing that the food is still in their mouth, uh, they keep, uh, they keep 
doubting her. They keep rebelling against God. They have seen the wonders. Uh, that is how they limit God. Uh, this God that have done these wonders in your life, you have seen it. You have experienced it. Uh, it could have been something that could have channeled you to see more of that. They could have seen more of the wonders of God. Uh, if not, they were rebelling against God, uh, limiting God in their way. Now, uh, when they have today, ah, is the Almighty God, is the Most High God, is our Rock. Uh, and when tomorrow, a little hunger come, why did God bring us to this place? Why did God did not allow us? Uh, this is a God that has fed you yesterday. And this is how the people uh, of Israel rebel against God. And today, now, we are still limiting God in the same way. Now. We limit God in so many ways. Uh, and because we limit God uh, in our thought, in our thinking, uh, in our ways, uh, that makes God uh, not to do wonders in our life. Just like they limit Jesus uh, when he comes to his own town. Uh, and they say, who is this? Uh, is this not the capital son? Yes, he was a capital son. Uh, they thought they know him. Uh, they thought they were because he was born here. Who is this one? Uh, just that capital son. Is the father not there? Is that mother not there? Did, did, did we not see him growing? Because of that, the limit God. Uh, and the Bible too does uh, because they limit him. Uh, he could not do wonders. Uh, he could not do much in his in what he did outside. Uh, he did not do it in his own land uh, because they limit him. Uh, and he could not. They could not see the wonders of God. Uh, why are we not seeing the miracles today? Why are we not seeing the wonders of God today? Because we keep limiting God. Uh, we keep rebelling against God. Uh, and many today keep saying, uh, I have to do it for God. Eh? Really? You, a mortal man, want to do something for the God that is immortal. The God that creates you. The God that knows you now. From before you were born, he knows everything about you. He knows how you're going to end. And you think you can do it for God. And this thought, this reasoning, this wrong reasoning, made people to go outside the will of God. Uh, make people to go out of the will of God. Uh, because by the time you start thinking that you want to do it for God, uh, you are going astray. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, another way, uh, can a man limit God? Uh, yes, uh, we can limit God in so many ways. Uh, some might not even know it. Uh, and so even though they keep doing it and say, ah, I want to do it for God. Uh, we can limit God uh, by not having faith in God totally. Now, listen, now, without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it will be difficult for, for you to receive from God. What is faith? Hebrew level told us about it. He said, faith is something you have not seen it. You just believe it. It's not in any way around you. Now, there is no, no, there is, there is no, the Italian will say, no brick glory of it. There is no, nothing. You don't smell it at all, but you just believe it uh, that it will come to pass. Uh, you believe God. Uh, you take God by his word. Uh, you said, you know that God says it. Uh, I believe it. Uh, as that settles it. Uh, it does not matter what I am hearing. Uh, it does not matter what is happening around me. Uh, it does not matter uh, the circumstances behind everything. Uh, it does not matter uh, what the news I am hearing uh, in the city, the land, in the in the, in the land that I am. Uh, it does not matter. What matters is that I know God says this. Uh, I hold on to it. Uh, that is what it means to have faith. Uh, totally in God. Uh, hallelujah. That is another area we limit God uh, by not having faith in God. Uh, today we have faith. Uh, tomorrow we are adapted like the people of Israel. Today we have faith because uh, I keep telling people, don't tell me you have faith when everything is sweet. Uh, come and ask me and I will tell you what to have faith, uh, what it's all about. Uh, don't tell me you have faith when you sing it, praise the Lord, hallelujah. No, tell me you have faith uh, when the going get tough. Uh, tell me you have faith uh, when you are not seeing the light uh, of what you are believing. Uh, tell me you have faith uh, when there is, there is no hope of nothing. There is no little hope at all. Uh, they tell me that you have hope, uh, that you have faith. Uh, that is what faith is all about. Uh, so when things are not going the way you want it, uh, you still stand. Uh, you still believe uh, that God says it. Uh, he does not, you don't know when uh, 
how uh, but she know that uh, as long as the word of god says it uh, you believe it uh, and by so doing uh, you begin to see the wonders of god uh, why are we not seeing those things uh, today uh, because uh, we continue to limit god uh, we can limit god uh, by disobedience we disobey God uh, by so doing. Uh, there is no way you can come to pray now uh, and you keep disobeying God and you expect to see the marvelous work of God in your life. It is impossible. It's just like a child uh, that the father said an error and the father said, okay, Brenda, go and do me this. I'll say, daddy, I'm not going. <laughs> There's no problem. I'll not go. Eh? Then later, I you come? Just later. When daddy say you may say you say you daddy your mommy you say you're not going and the few hours later I say daddy I need money to buy book <laughs> if I'm gonna find that you did not go there anyway you did not even think about it because that day you don't go even enter as so I say you say you don't go go so it's the same thing when you begin to disobey your father you are limiting what God can do in your life. Uh, you limit that thing that he wants to do. Uh, because at that moment you are disobeying God. Uh, things stand firm. Uh, it stands still. Uh, those things cannot go further. Uh, the Bible told us in the book of 1 John. Let's quickly read that please. 1 John. I'm just trying to rush it because you know time is always on my side. Uh, let me use that word. 1 John chapter 3 verse 22. 1 John chapter 3 22 says he said and receive from him anything uh, we ask because we keep okay let me start from 22 dear friends if our heart do not condemn us we have confidence before god uh, and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commandment and do what pleases him uh, when you keep the commandment, when you are obedient to God, uh, whatever you ask, you receive. Uh, that is when uh, you begin to see that there is no limitation in this God. Uh, that is when you begin to see that there is nothing, uh, no, no level that this God cannot reach. Uh, but when you disobey God, you limit Him by not making to do those things that He says He will do. Now, hallelujah. Another way with this, so another way we limit God. Uh, is by not believing God. Uh, we, we, we believe that uh, we can we can get help from someone else uh, by seeking help uh, from someone else uh, instead of trusting in God. We limit God uh, by instead of us to go to God, uh, we are looking for someone that will help us to do it for God. And that is why we see today, we see today many so-called believers they are putting their hands in where they ought not to. They are doing things they ought not to, all the sake of they want to do miracle. And our Father is a miracle working God. Then if he is a miracle, you trust this God that is a miracle working God. Why should you go and look for fake miracle? Listen, anything that is not of God is a counterfeit. It's a fake one. And anything that is fake, it does not last. It has an expiry date. Uh, the only thing that does not have expiry date is the one that comes from God. Uh, it's original and it's permanent. And that is all what I want to encourage us with today. Whatever you get outside, listen, uh, if the devil give you anything, remember it will come for it one day. It's sooner or later, it's going to come for it. So when you go there, you take it from me now, you're happy now. Yes, how long will it take? It's a question you ask yourself. I have been there, and I know what I'm talking When I was not a Christian, I was in the world. Uh, and so many things I, I did that, uh, they'll say, and this, and this one comes, and more. they will run and do it. It's just a matter of time. And before you know it, that thing that you did before, it will start coming back to you. It's just a matter of time. Whatever you get outside God, uh, it does not last. It's a counterfeit. It's a photocopy. It's not original. The only thing that lasts is original. So if you try to get help outside God, that help will bring tears at the end. Then why don't you wait and trust in this God uh, that you know there is no limitation in Him? We limit God by seeking help, uh, looking for help from where there is no. 
And the Bible makes us to understand that he is the one that creates all things. Now, if God is the one that creates all things, what makes you think uh, that something that God creates will be better than God? Impossible now. Okay, let's quickly see the book of Psalm, Psalm 4 verse 2. Psalm 4 verse 2. Hallelujah. I'm about to conclude Psalm, Psalm 4 verse 2 says that, uh, he said, how long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek face gods? For how long will you, keep, will you keep doing that? How long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you keep deceiving yourself by going to seek help where there is no? By faking what you're, what you're using, how long? And above it all, where will it land you? Have you cared to ask yourself that? And lastly, we limit God by doubting. We limit God by doubting. Doubting, the Bible, the book of James told us that anyone that doubts will not, not think you will receive anything from God. Then if you are doubting, I don't know. Ah, okay, God healed my headache. He cannot heal my cancer. That has come. And no matter how you pray, it will not be healed. Uh, because you are doubting that. I'm not sure. Say, God, will he do this one? I am not sure that my God will do it. Uh, you keep doubting. And that doubting keeps robbing you of the blessings. Uh, hallelujah. I wanted to read the book of Mike chapter 6. If time will permit me. Let me just. Times. Mike chapter 6 verse 5. I conclude with this one. Mark 6 verse 5 says uh, he said he could not do any miracle there except lay his signs on a few people who were healed who were healed and healed dead uh, hallelujah because of that uh, because of limitation uh, i want to encourage us today this god that we're talking about uh, is the god that created the universe uh, it's not the god that was created by man as a God by himself, uh, as a God that there is no thing uh, that you can use to describe it, uh, is the God that there is no, and I repeat, no limitation in him. Uh, there is nothing this God cannot do. Come to him the way you, you are. Come to him with what your problem is. Uh, give it to God. Uh, don't seek to look, for, don't try to look for help uh, where there is no help because at the end, those things will cause you more pains, uh, will cause you more tears. Uh, when you bring your bodies to God, wait patiently, trust in Him, believe in Him, and have faith in Him. Uh, that is the only way you begin to experience uh, the, that there is no limits that God cannot do. May the Lord bless His soul into our heart in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful and a glorious day. Amen.